remember the first training that I was playing against Gixi, Saha, uh, Rooney, Cristiano. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> that was nightmare. <laughs> I was kicking them all training. Not because I wanted, because like, I couldn't catch them. And after that, Fergie took us to the hotel. I was looking through the window and said, wow, man, I'm going to play for Man United, you know? In my moment, I was thinking, wow, I signed for less money, actually, than I had in Spartak Moscow for Man United. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? I, no. I <laughs> They can never do it like I When you see man pull up and slide Man stepped in a room with legends Rio and Steve, you know it's a vibe Check the podcast, what you wanna know? Don't ask me, go and ask Joe If you're talking Premier League He's on the front line and I gotta go oh. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is Vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know what it is It's a vibe with five, vibe with five And you already know this Welcome back to five no man, you've been it. <laughs> Probably the most requested guest we yep. have ever, ever had. Yep. And it, above Come Fergie, on. right? Fergie yeah. gets a lot of requests. Ever got a lot of requests? Mm. No one more than the man you've finished. Thank you for coming. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me, actually. Oh, man. And thank you for you to inviting me. And actually, <laughs> you did that first time, I think, a long time ago, five years ago. I've, I've been inviting Sorry. you since, <laughs> since the, day, the day you retired, I've been inviting you. But it's good to see you. Listen. We can wait, but as long as we, we have this conversation, I'm happy, man. So Cheer, I was one of the ones as well. Everyone, mate. Because everyone always, everyone. when I'm walking around, get that. They say, oh, the show's great. When's Vida coming on? When's Village coming on? Get your partner on. I'm like, bro, I'm asking every other week, I'm asking this guy. I've got to wait till he's ready. <laughs> so you're here now. So it's no, good. I waited the right moment because I would argue a bit with him today. So we have <laughs> some things we want to talk about. Oh. Be careful, you what you're going to ask me today. I'm ready. <laughs> when was the last time? When was the last time you guys saw each other? Because I saw you outside. We've got clips of you guys together and it seemed like a brotherhood. It's like time hasn't changed. When was the last time you saw Rio? Actually, doing? I'm watching him all the time on Instagram, so... Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably he didn't see me a long time ago, but yeah. <laughs> I see him no, all the no. time. Talking of Instagram, are you on it yet or not? Uh, it took you five years to convince me to come to, in to interview. <laughs> if you succeed me to, to have Instagram, man... Uh, How long ago was that? 15 years. 15 years ago? <laughs> wow. When I, was, when I was on Twitter, he was one of the guys who said, well, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing on this Twitter? This shit? What, what is this? And I used to explain... I used to go, nah, I ain't got time for this. I ain't got time. No, the, actually, the Rio was the, even then he's saying, yeah, you have to go on YouTube. This is the future. This is the future. He started with the Twitter. I, I, I remember Gaffa was mad about it yeah, yeah. in the beginning. <laughs> Rio didn't care. He said, oh, I love this. This is the future, man. You have to do it. Yeah. And he was trying to convince me to go on Twitter. I did then the Instagram. So he was right. Actually, no. everything he advised me to do, he was, yeah. he was right. <laughs> no, 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 no. We've got some mistakes. Don't worry. <laughs> but what, what, listen, everyone's really like interested to know like what you're doing now, where you live in, what are you, what are you up to at the moment? I just moved two years ago to Belgrade. So I go back home after 18 years. Wow. So that's, that's good. Very happy there. Mm. Uh, obviously, I invest some money there in a, in a property business. I have my own company, which I'm developing apartments. That's the one thing I'm doing and uh, I'm uh, trying to actually learn as much as I can. Obviously, I finished my pro license with the uh, English FA. Uh, I'm doing now a master with UEFA for administration. So in the future, if I want to be working in administration in the football. So that's what I'm doing now. Uh, obviously, I'm boss of my time. You know, always I want that to be the one in charge, where I want to go and how I want to do it and mm. when I'm going to do it. So I'm happy with that <coughs> and I'm focusing on my family. So kids are still small, young. Mm. I didn't want to move from them. There were some options I could do in recent years, but I, I decided that I want to I wanna be next to my family and uh, help them grow and, uh, and be the best part of their lives uh, mm. to, to spend together. So yeah, that's, mm. that's, that's, that's what I'm doing now. You just um, withdrawn your application for Serbian FA president. Mm. Do you want to talk us through what happened there? Actually, that was my passion. Obviously, Serbia, you know, I'm very passionate about <coughs> Serbia, especially about Serbian football. Uh, actually, I was, I'm last two years in Serbia and people always asking me, like, why you don't uh, start to be involved in Serbian football? Why you don't help? You have a lot of connections, you have ideas, you, you obviously educate yourself and... Uh, 
And obviously in one, one moment I was thinking about it and I, I actually applied for the presidency. And to be fair, it was a good experience. And um, every, everything ended up well until, until the last part, which, which I decided that is not the right moment for me because publicly 90% of the people there are for me to be the president. But you know what? The people who are in the FA, people who's actually in charge of the football, they're struggling with, um, with the changes and the scare of changes. So mm -hmm. I'm the one who gonna bring the changes and obviously that was the issue in this moment in time. And obviously I put my name there and in the future, who, never, who, who knows what's gonna happen, mm -hmm. but I will be there to to help Serbian football, maybe in this, not this form as a president, but maybe in any other opportunity if I have, I will do it because definitely if you have a talent there and uh, we have to explore more and we have to help more the Serbian kids mm. to grow. Have you been speaking to Berber? Because I saw Berber, yeah. he's doing this in, in Bulgaria yeah. as well. Yeah, Berber, Berber is uh, fighting uh, to be the president the last one and a half year. So mm. he's, uh, <coughs> it's kind of, it's difficult. Balkan is difficult because there is the old generations which doesn't want to give up the, power. the the power. And obviously they are struggling with uh, understanding that world the world is moving all the time forward. But um, but we're not, and uh, like we see with digitalization and uh, world five years ago and now is not the same. Hmm. You have to always learn. You have to educate yourself. You have to be in advance, and they don't realize that. And that's why I think we don't uh, take best cap capabilities we have from Serbian football, and that was my desire to help. But obviously, in this time, it didn't happen. But we'll see what's going to happen in the hmm. future. You just spoke there about you doing your pro license, you're doing your masters with UEFA, <clears throat> looking at administration, wanting to be the UEFA uh, a Serbian president. What's the next step then? Because those things are coaching, management. Yeah. No, see it's, the it, it's, it's not <clears throat> like that. I think I think that I'm definitely where I want to be. I, I want to be in Serbia. I want to be at home with my family. Actually, to, after 18 years, to I I'm happy to be there. Like I said, I invest some money there. I, I have some business going on, which is I want to develop. And my kids, they're still young. I would say in five, six years time, I will, I will, I will have more chance to do exactly what I want to do in football. Probably, maybe it's not going to be on that level, which probably some people desire, but it's going to be on a level which I feel that I can bring something to the football. Is it going to be in in area of the coaching or is it the administration? Uh, I will see what opportunities comes. But definitely what I did in the last seven years, I was trying to educate myself all the time in different areas. Because like I said before, I think this world is go, uh, moving fast. It's very innovative, uh, decolorization, innov innovation. Mm -hmm. That's the future. And obviously I changed since the 15 years ago, which you're talking about the Instagram and Twitter. And I was against the innovation. I was against mm. the things which is... Uh, why? Why was you always... Because you were, I always say to people, you, you know why? you're very meticulous and you, you have to be certain on everything. Why? You know why? Because at the time, you know, I was I wanted to focus on football. So I didn't want to have distractions. And, um, and f at that time, I knew that I have a, a best possible club I'm playing for. And I did, didn't want to waste time on other things. I want to focus. I want to give my best to succeed. Uh, and uh, and I think I did the right thing in that time. Obviously, now in this time, when I'm actually in this age, when I'm considering myself to be in a different positions, I have to be different minds, mm -hmm. uh, have a different mindset. So obviously, I have to be um more knowledgeable obviously i have to understand more things and i have to understand young generation old generation mm -hmm. i have to understand uh, which part is going the, the football that's what i'm passionate of which and, be more open. yeah and yeah. to be more open yeah but obviously <laughs> like it's my dna to be careful but it's it's definitely to to be more open and to be uh innovative yeah mm. just just take us back to when you was younger, before you came to Man United, you grew up obviously in Serbia. Just tell the the people that are listening and watching that what that was like and that experience for you. 
Uh, obviously, we have a lot of turbulations in, in, in my childhood. Obviously, I, I, I was born 81, actually 10 years after we had the war in Bosnia, which is not far from my home, maybe 200 kilometers, 150 kilometers. But uh, I didn't really felt because it was not war in my hometown. It's not home in Serbia. It's one of part of the Serbia is the Bosnia. Like, it's not far from, from us. And I was young, I didn't felt it. Obviously in 2000, when, when was the bombing from NATO, well, that, that's the one where I felt it because I was in Resta Belgrade, I couldn't play football, I moved back to, to my hometown, Užice. And it was really scary because, you know, one day the people from the club came and said, you have to go home, it's going to be trouble in the next maybe three, four days. We cannot guarantee your safety, you have to go home. And the next two months was really, really scary because you didn't know what's going to happen with your future. The bombs are raining down. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that was really scary. But after one month, how crazy is that to say? But you, 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 you learn to live with it, you know, because uh, it's kind of. You, you try to find a way, you obviously went to play football, you're trying to wait to, to go in front of your home to, 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 to socialize with your friends, but still in your mind you have kind of, wow, how long is it going to take this to, to stop? Mm. Uh, and I think that in my character puts that kind of mentality that, that you, you, you when you have opportunity to do certain things, you, you, you give your best because you understand where you are in a certain mm -hmm. time of your life. And if you, like I said before, if you come to Man United, biggest club in the world, and you have opportunity to prove yourself and, and, and to show how good you are in front of the whole world, you know, you don't want to waste the time <laughs> any moment to do the, the, the stupid things. Mm -hmm. Maybe I did stupid things when I was in Moscow and maybe in Serbia, but I realized, <laughs> you know, yeah, this yeah. is the moment, you know. So with that, Especially after the first time, actually, you took me out, you know, you, you took me to the bad club. It was <laughs> bad atmosphere. Ooh, and I really realized, cool. I, I was realized, I was realized, Rio, is, this is the best club in the town. He said, yes. I said, mm, I'm not going out. Come on. <laughs> Sugar <laughs> lounge. Sugar lounge. Sugar lounge. Sugar lounge. Sugar hip hop. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not that music. Nah? No, no, it wasn't no, for that. No, no. I knew no. immediately when we walked into the club. <laughs> no. And we looked at me and went, Rio? Is this it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, listen, it was lights like this. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I would say, this is the club or is it the restaurant? Or, or what's happening? Yeah, yeah, he wasn't happy. And he can't hide when he's not happy. Really? No, you see on his face. Yeah. I want to take it. Well, first of all, we're actually recording this in Manchester, which mm. I think is special. Um, firstly, I want to ask you, like, when you walk into the city of Manchester, do you get any nostalgia feeling? Uh, what, what does it remind you of being here? Actually, I was going uh, just half an hour, I was checking in, in, in reception and I'm going on the fifth floor and I'm remembering that we are actually sitting in a corridor playing a second so game. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the best, it's the best game, no? It's the best game. Yeah, it so, yeah. was, uh, no, it was, it, uh, you know, great memories, obviously. It was a great time, great team. Obviously, I was eight years at the club, five, five league trophies, yeah, so yeah. That, that, was, that, was, that was crazy. And obviously, great memories. I, I got the three kids in Manchester, so not just the um, professionally, but as well, um, privately, was one of the best part of my life. Have they got Mancunian accents? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Actually, in the beginning, they had, but because we moved to Italy, yeah, <laughs> because we moved to Italy, they lost it. But I hear them sometimes. There, there is the on YouTube. They had the guys the changing accents. Mm. Oh, and yeah, they're playing yeah, those yeah, games, yeah, you know, yeah. and then they, they can do easy, the Mancunian. So I think they can, <laughs> in one month, they can, they can do it. So. Get it back. So, so, so when you uh, talk us through the process of coming to Man United and what that feeling was like and the transition to coming to Manchester United. Oh, actually, the first moment when I was uh, in contact with the club was 2005, I think, December. 15, maybe, or 15, 20 December, and Buddha Vujacic, you know who's Buddha? You know Buddha? The, uh, the scout. The scout, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came to me and then he said, listen, you want to play for Man United? I said, yeah, of course, I want to play for Man United. <laughs> because at the time, was Liverpool was involved. Okay. I spoke with Rafa Benitez, and then he was... What? 
he was uh, he was he, he was the one was first in touch with me i was in spartak moscow maybe one month before that and my english was not good my wife was actually talking to him anna Try, actually uh, at that time was girlfriend oh, wow. because my english was uh, not not great uh and he was asking me do i want to come in england you know and certain things yeah, yeah, yeah everything was great and then for two three weeks he didn't call and then fergie obviously get in touch through the Buddha to me. And then he said, do you want to come? Actually, Buddha tell me, yes, I want. Okay, Ferry going to call you. I said, come on. I said, oh, no, Ferry going to call you. I said, what am I going to say? I, my English is bad, man. You know, I said, no, 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 I put it on speakerphone. If, if you don't understand that, we're going to help you. I said, okay. And Ferry was <laughs> called and then he said, uh, hi, Nemanja. <laughs> never, 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 never call me Nemanja, you know? <laughs> And yeah, yeah, hi, you know, and then he said, how are you doing? Everything is good. You know, I say, yeah, yeah, all good. I'm looking you for last six months, one year. How are you playing? Uh, I like the way you play. I think you're going to be good for the club. Do you want to join? I say, of course, I, will, I would like to join. Don't worry. Everything else is going to be settled in one week. I was in, in Manchester. So wow, quick. It, it was, it was, it was fast. And I remember that moment when I come to Manchester, that was funny one. I came and obviously Sir Alex Ferguson was waiting. Whole trip he was there. <coughs> and this is a story I, I would like to share. And then me and Buddha Vujacic came together. And when we came, obviously first we went to hotel to see the players. If you remember, I was there mm -hmm. when you had a dinner yeah, yeah, yeah. before the one game. I don't know which game it was. Know. I was sitting with uh, Cristiano Ronaldo and Luis Saha on the table. Mm. And after that, Fergie took us to the hotel, other hotel. We didn't stay in the same mm. hotel. He took us to other hotel and he was actually was taking the bag from me and, and Buddha Vujacic putting in the bag. I said, wow, <laughs> Fergie taking the bag from me and putting in the bag. I said, this is amazing. This is a story I have to say to the guys, you know. I said, he's normal, man. He's, 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 he's crazy, you know. No, he was taking, he, he wanted to put it back inside, you know. No. I said, okay, great. And then we went to the hotel, everything was great. Tomorrow I had negotiations about everything, what's happening in my future and stuff like that. So obviously that's done. And then tomorrow he took us to airport and same again, put it the bags, taking us to the airport. Okay, see you in, in 10 days. Because at the time I had, um, uh, I had to take the visa and uh, all this stuff. And when I was airplane, I was looking through the window and say, wow, man, I'm going to play for Man United. You know, I was thinking about the Fergie taking the bag in <laughs> the back. In my moment, I was thinking, wow, I signed for less money actually than I had in Spartak Moscow for Man United. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? I, no. I did. Oh, no, no, I was like, <laughs> never mind. I was saying for Man United. <laughs> Wow. For less money? Yeah, yeah for less wow. money. Yeah. Oh, you never knew. <laughs> no, I realized that when I was in the plane. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got caught up in everything. Wow. No, no, I'm joking, but in general, yeah, it was, yeah. it, they're so nice. Everything with the Fergie, I wish I met the David Gill, you know, the big club, I met the players, everything mm. was great. But in the end of the day, everything that was like, for me, more important actually than actually money, money and mm. how much I was sign for. So that was actually the beginning. Obviously, I was... Uh, it was some negotiations in the beginning. I was not happy with how they end up, but mm. in the end, in the end it was, it was, uh, we, it was we, we had a uh, Patrice on and he signed the same window as you. Mm. And he was mentioned that you guys were in a hotel together. And he said it was like a really difficult time. The first few months, what was it like for you? Actually for me, it was very difficult because in um, Russia in December, you have uh, one, one and a half months off because it, there is too cold. Mm. It's the winter time and uh, we have a break, no trainings. So actually when I came to United, it was like 3rd or 4th of January. Mm. I didn't train for more months. Oh. So actually, that's why. And <laughs> then I remember that I said to the, to the Gaffa and Karos, I need a preseason. I'm not fit. Mm. I can, I can play. I remember the first trainings I was playing against Gixi. So, uh, Saha, Rooney, Cristiano, so, wow. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, <laughs> that was nightmare. <laughs> I was kicking them all training, not because I wanted, because like, I couldn't catch them. 
you can keep that, no they're, they're too fast in, especially in the beginning mm -hmm. and i remember i was arguing with the geeksy after the three trainings <laughs> Gixi was saying, you know, you know, Gixi, he's become start to be angry, you know, pass mm. the ball, you have to play faster, <laughs> man, come on, I can't move. <laughs> no, it's mad, no, it I remember funny. speaking to you, yeah. and like, knowing you now, what must have been going through your head, you must have been thinking about every single detail. Did you ever like doubt yourself and think, this might not work? No, definitely. The first six months was really tough. Uh, like you said, Patrice came at the same time. I remember we played the game for reserves as well. And we struggled even for reserves. Wow. Yeah. I, I, Rene was the coach. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Mugenstein. Mugenstein, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember at half time he took us off, me and Patrice. At <laughs> <the reserves? laughs> yeah. No way. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But, but I think Gaffa I think I, I think Gaffa actually watched the game on, on <clears throat> MUTV. And I think he he told him like I mean, the cool. <laughs> take them off. <laughs> <laughs> Get them off my TV. <laughs> Get them off my TV now. <laughs> wow. Because Patrice said he said specifically oh. you guys were like in the changing rooms oh. and he was he mentioned, isn't it? He said he was thinking of going back to going to AS Roma, he said, yeah, and Monaco, then Monaco, Monaco, and then who No, you can feel, you can feel actually you walking through the Carrington, but Tris was playing for Monaco. He was playing the semi-final, semi semi-final League. of Champions League. He's already established uh, a football player. I came from Spartak Moscow, mm. no one knew who I am. Actually, that was a really mm. question mark, you know? And this guy coming to trainings is, is, is struggling. And going to play reserves game, he's struggling. It's it's kind of it was really difficult. But after the preseason, I was uh, I started to play regularly. Mm. Mm. Good. And we start talking much more. Did he ghost you when you first came? Then actually, Thank he you. was a big help. Really? No, yeah, yeah, he was a big help. Really? No, hundred percent. He was a big help. Uh, I was lucky. Actually, I met him when he was twenty. Six, 25, 26? 20, yeah, 20, yeah. 26, I think. Because I didn't meet him when he was 21. I yeah. think I will be struggling. <laughs> 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 it would have been the wrong wheel, the wrong wheel. Yeah. Yeah. I met him when he was 24. It was really, it was really good, actually. And we went with the, with, with the girlfriends mm -hmm. at the time. We went for dinner and he, everything I needed in town, he was there to help. And as well, he wanted as well our partnership to work. He, he, it was really good. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm not saying because he is here. I'm saying that I said that many times because definitely he was supported to me mm. since day one and and yeah i think we, we did well so that's good to hear you know <laughs> rio being a nice guy but you actually know what he thought of you when you first arrived i didn't know what he thought maybe that's why i, I thought he's a good guy yeah <laughs> no, no, I, I, I remember me and Waza was talking and saying like about you and patrice like wow they have a long way to go these guys yeah. they're 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 struggling they're off the mm. pace but the thing I didn't actually consider is like what he said. Pre he's playing against, he didn't have preseason for mm -hmm. one, but he also he was playing against Luis Saha, probably the hardest player in training, Ronaldo, Rooney, Giggsy, et cetera. At that time, Giggsy, when time, he was flying. even, yeah, yeah, yeah he, was, so, he was younger. But they were, they struggled and you could see it and it's like, you think you, you guys better get up to speed. Mm -hmm. And like you said, preseason come. My story. Oh, the rude oh. as well, rude. What Forgot got you rude. up to speed? I think that desire as well in pre-season, you, you, you know, you adapt, you know, you know to play football. That's not the issue. It's just intensity. You realize that you everything you do, you have to do faster. Mm. And, you know, you, ha you know how to touch the ball. You know how to head at the ball. You know how to, sh to, to shoot the ball. You know to defend, obviously, tactically. I think I was good enough to, to play that level. But I was intensity was too hard. People, players, they're too fast and obviously, when I was playing in Spartak Moscow, Red Star Belgrade, the national team intensity is so low. These guys competing every training because no one guaranteed that you're going to be next season there. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what Gaffa actually implemented for the fr from from first day I came and to the last day I left. It was like trainings, you know, like the last day of her life, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing that the uh, training sessions were harder than the matches themselves. Mm -hmm. Definitely, again, when you play against those players, it's hard. Uh, like I said before, it's, I think that helped me to improve, helped me to to learn to play against top players. You know, sometimes you play against top players once in in, in, in three weeks, you play every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes player to be better, especially the players that giving 100% every training. And that's what 
I think now the young kids have to learn. It's, it's, I think sometimes the wasting energy in the train, in the gym, in the gym, in the recovery process, but actually when they go on the pitch, they don't really mm. perform. You remember Scorsi? Scorsi, when he comes to training, he came last, but when he comes to that training pitch, different level. I'll Not just different level. He's playing 100%. Yeah. Is uh, so. So what is it? So it's mentality. Yeah, I think mentality. Mentality mm-hmm. is something which makes uh, make a difference from good player to the top player. Mm-hmm. I think there are a lot of players from my career which they are really quality wise, maybe above my uh, level. Uh, level, mm-hmm. but mentality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I want to ask further when it comes to training because I feel like looking at it from the perspective of other clubs, Man United were just at that level. And I think it's what was done at the training training ground. So if you take, let's just say Cristiano Ronaldo at that age, what was he doing that you thought, wow, this kid is different? I will tell you this. When I came from Spartak Moscow, first two weeks, I was trying to understand, you know, what other people do. Mm -hmm. And I always, when I come to dressing room, I don't see anyone. I say, wait, these guys, what are they doing? You know, training just finished like 10 minutes ago. And one week, second week, third week, I, I start to chase them through the corridors and, <laughs> and to see what they're doing. I see mm-hmm. Gixi doing yoga, mm-hmm. Rio doing the gym always, okay. especially before the summers. <laughs> <laughs> That's an inside joke. I'm still <laughs> doing the curls for the girls, man. Yeah. No, she's doing, man. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. But Rio is always doing something. Then I'm looking to the pitch. I see Cristiano Ronaldo doing the bicycles wow. for the two pitches. Wow. Wayne Rooney doing the finishing. Yeah. Uh, everyone do something. And I, see, I look myself, I see my body. I, I see the real body. Remember my body when I came? <laughs> <laughs> he used to stand in the change room and go, look at me, man. <laughs> He's jumping his towel and go, what is this? No. <laughs> oh, funny guy. Man. No, funny. actually, uh, oh, your legs are strong. No, no, legs are strong, but I'm doing the pillows. <laughs> <laughs> Covering like uh, the lady. He used to always have a towel over the oh, shoulders yeah. and a towel around here. Yeah. yeah. But that's why. You, you, no, no, but, you know, you realize that, you know, mentality, mm-hmm. you know, organization for the club. And, and, and that's helped me as well. I was not like that when I came, but you learn, you learn from mm-hmm. other players, you learn, you know, you follow the path. If you don't follow the path, you're not going to be longer there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I realized that luckily, uh, fast. And then I played for the club eight and a half years. Did you two click in training? <clears throat> Did you work together in training or was you on opposite teams at nine side and stuff like that? I don't know, your <coughs> answer might be different to mine. I've always said, I don't, I don't remember working as a pair. You've got to get this pair together and we've got to make them right. It was like, like they go together. Sometimes I might be doing 2v2 or two defenders against four or five attackers. And I might be Vida for two or three times, but then Wes, then PK, then, and then back with Vida and then and Silvestri, etc. But I didn't feel that it was like, we've got to get this partnership right. It kind of just, they put us together and then I think we both smelt something. Mm-hmm. And then we we became closer. And then that bond built on and off the pitch for me. What do you, what, how did you see? I, I think at the time, I don't know how it started, but I remember after a while, maybe six months, maybe pre-season, I don't know. I think we start talking a bit more. Mm. We start talking in terms of the more, in terms of the, sorry, talking more on the pitch. Communicate. Communicating more, you know, I'm, I ask him question, what do you think in this situation, what's happening? What? And then, you know, it's become like natural, you know, I think, we, I think I was very open towards Rio in terms of the, how I felt. I think Rio as well, you know, wanted to say how he feel in certain situation, which happening in, 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 during the, in, during the game, during the training. And I think that's how grow our relationship, but obviously that didn't start straight away, but longer we play, I think we even. In the first two years, I think we, we talked all the time in, in the trainings. If you remember the, the players, they're complaining, you know, mm. saying like you two guys, like stop, stop talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you, you remember, <laughs> you remember that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just on after pitch in the gym, yeah. in the uh, sauna. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I've got an idea. I want 
what did you like about him as a player? What did you like about him as a player? And then I'm going to do what annoyed you about each other because there's got to have been something. I just loved that he loved to attack the ball. He, he, he wanted to attack the ball anyway. He didn't see an opponent. He just saw the ball. <laughs> Serious. And he was aggressive like that. And and even with the ball, Vida was, Vida was better than what people talk about sometimes. People sort of only talk about the aggression and, and how he's a warrior. He did like right in his But with the ball, he was still very, very good. But also just being calm under pressure. I think I enjoyed that element of someone being calm next to me. I didn't. I don't like emotional people around me on a football pitch. I don't like it in the big, big situations. You need calmness. And as aggressive as he was, he was calm. Obviously, I think we complement each other in terms of the the way we play. Because I think Rio, on the ball, he was he liked to play always. He was really fast, and most important, me as a defender as a as a player I play for many years when you have someone next to you you can trust mm. it's you know it doesn't matter what you do you know that this guy is there and Rio was that on the pitch always honest always there should be and uh, and I think in terms of in terms of the quality I think the he has everything speed technique in the air I think only thing he didn't like to header the ball he was <laughs> yeah. great in the air but didn't header, didn't like header in the I'd ball them, he will do it <laughs> he will do it if he have to yeah. but he would rather to let the ball go and take that ball than to header yeah. the ball <laughs> you, you spend nice. two hours in the hairdressers in, 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 um, in um, Manchester and get my hair done for two hours I can't get it messed up man what an idea about him what an idea there's no uh, way he played to he did it, he did it. No, he didn't. I, I didn't have anything that annoyed me about it. It must have been that. one little tick he did every game. You're like, oh, you must have some for him. No. Oh, no. come on, lads. No, there wasn't. It was just a... <laughs> no, really, I, I told you because, you know, I think when you have next someone next to you, like I said, I see him after two years. You said like the brothers, like yeah. we have been in a war for, for eight years, yeah. <laughs> nine years. You know what I mean? He, he, he covered my back for nine years yeah. and I did his, I think. In, in, yeah. and, and I think we as a partners, I think we match together and we achieve what we achieve. I mm -hmm. think Vida without Rio Sorry. will not be the Vida. You know what I mean? It's kind of, mm -hmm. it's kind of, and as well, mm -hmm. if it was club at the time was not as successful and didn't have a, those kind of players that will not be recognized, as what that I am now, mm -hmm. and 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 I'm definitely proud of that to be part of that generation and and part of that uh, players and 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 look at if you look at now what players played my time mm. of Man United. Crazy, it's crazy when you look back at it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Proud. I want to um, go back to Sir Alex Ferguson because obviously he's had a massive impact on both your careers. You signing, mm. carrying the bags, as you were saying. Mm. What was it that he was doing that was different at the time? You've, you've played for Inter, you've played for, you know what I mean? That you, you've been at big clubs. What is it that stood out and then you thought, this guy's just, mm. he, he's just a cut above the rest and he's helping both of your careers. Mm. You want me to answer first? No, for you, for yeah. you. Um, I think what he did, what no other manager did in his career, I think he developed the players and, and still challenging for the titles. Mm. If you look at it now, you don't have it managers they don't do that I think only one he tried to do that it was Arsene Wenger and he was doing for a few years for a few years not as long as, as, as Sir Alex I think he was struggling in a in the last six seven years he introduced a lot of young players and big credit to uh, Arsene Wenger I mm -hmm. think he was he wanted to leave something behind in the football he was not someone who's gonna just buy football players I think Fergie did the same he developed Nemanja Vidic from Spartak Moscow for seven million pounds mm -hmm. Patrice Evra, mm -hmm. uh, many Jeans of Park, but you can say Gixi, Scorsi, no, uh, Nani, Chano Cristiano Chef, Ronaldo, Brown. Cristiano Ronaldo. So you can see that he didn't board out players to give him the title. He create new generation of football players. And That's Wayne true. Rooney even, he came from Everton. He played the big money, but he was 18 years old boy. He's going to bring the trophy. I mean, he was, I'm, I'm, he, was I'm, he was one of the best in the world. Though. Yeah, but no, no, no. I'm, I'm trying to no, say from so. Everton, 
to come to yeah. give you the trophy. Yeah. Uh, do you think that any coach will do that now? No. And I think that's what he left, and that's what legacy he actually he left behind him, and still winning the trophies. No one does as him, and as well, I think the how spontaneous he is. I think in you know when you are twenty seven years at the club, of course that some players are going to be happy the the way he maybe treat them, but in the end of the day, I think he set up the rules. Who follow the rules is there. Who doesn't follow the rules is not there. Mm. Wow. I think that's yeah, yeah. that's kind of if you play even longer uh, with Sir Alex, maybe you know him even better than me. But mm. but I believe that he will try to be right by you if you ride by him. Mm. I think 100%. and and that's right. It shouldn't be opposite. Mm. I think you should have to be right for the club and right for the manager, and then he will you understood this right. quick because I remember you saying to me yeah. when I remember when I argued with him, uh, Bayern, remember. Mm -hmm. When he made a decision, he brought on Berber and I was screaming on the pitch and in the and tunnel. I told you that. Yeah. And then we come in a change room and I'm screaming. Then the manager, shut up, came on top and just the hairdryer went crazy. And I was arguing a little bit. I remember you said, and, and Gary said, like, just, just leave it. And I got on the plane and we were, I was not arguing with you, but we was having a discussion about it. Mm -hmm. He was going, real. if you want to stay here, you have to, there's rules and there's a way that you might not agree with it, but you have to abide by these rules. Wow. And talking back in front of the whole team like that, you're not going to stay alone. Yeah, that's definitely what I felt. You know, that's that, that when you feel when you come to the club, maybe because I'm I'm foreigner and I came and you can see, you learn that you have to adapt because you came abroad, you have to adapt to the mm. country you came, you have to adapt to the club you came and organization, the, the how he set up. So I felt that straight away and I, you know, and I think Old players then not knew that, but sometimes I think you know, passionate you are. Sometimes you acted, but I think in the end of the day you always go well with the gaffer. I think mm -hmm. you're a gaffer. Even <laughs> you have a better connection on the pitch uh, in in the training, mm -hmm. and in, in, he lo always loves to talk to you, isn't it, gaffer? Mm -hmm. yeah. I always ask questions. <laughs> always asking, who are you buying? Who are you buying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. I want to talk about 2008. Obviously, we went very close in 2007. <laughs> Um, very, very close in 2007. But 2008, when we became European champions, at what point did either of you feel like that was going to happen or likely to happen? Or did you ever feel like we were going to do it? Hmm. That's, that's a tough question. I, I, you know, I think the first one when we won the... Because when I came, I think my United didn't win the, traf the trophy for three years, mm. three league titles. Mourinho and, and Wenger. The two, or two or three, this is the third one or, or, or when I came and then we won. And I remember when we won the first league title, then vibe in, in, in the Carrington in, in, in the club changed. Wow. And you can feel that we go into the match, he's like, we're not bothered. We, we know we're going, we have a goal in us, especially mm. at the time Ronaldo, uh, Rooney, even Luis Saha when he's fit. And we are comfortable with that. And obviously, defensively, we are good at, at the time. We, all, we always forget to, to say, but Edwin Mandersai played a big part in that. <laughs> as well, uh, the, the, the partnership. I think the three of us, I think we, 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 we get really, we go really well on the Connected, pitch. Yeah. Connected really well. I think Edwin was, uh, was great for two of us. And I think that's kind of, you go to the games and you believe that you're players who's playing next to you is the best one. I would never think that player who play for Chelsea and Arsenal would be better in our team. You know, you have Ronaldo Rooney, you have Paul Scholes, Ryan Giggs, Tevez, you, have, you know what I mean? Carrot. You're saying like, wow. Dangerous. You know? Confidence, Confidence was crazy. Dangerous. Only thing when you go to play, obviously the final, final is one match, you know, that mm. was a bit game, which was, which was kind of, you have to say that's, Maybe one in your life you're gonna play. You nervous for that? Yeah, I am because actually I didn't train two or three weeks yeah, before yeah. that game. Oh really? Yeah, I didn't one training, and I came to Luzhniki. Obviously, the stadium I played before I came to Man United. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I remember. God, I'm gonna say something. Yeah, but actually, I, one and a half year before I was playing Spartak Moscow, and now I'm playing Champions League final for Man United. And I was like. Is it this real? Do you remember the night you know before, I mean? Vida? Huh? Do you remember the night before? The game we played on the pitch? No, but, but I have to say, when Gaffa came to me and saying, you've you been there. 
<laughs> so you. No, no, no. I didn't train for two weeks, maybe even more. Oh, and sorry. then the training before the game, I was trying with the team and Gaffa coming to me with a how you feeling. So I started to say, you're playing tomorrow. He just left. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say nothing. No, no, because I was starting to say, no, Gaffa, you know, I feel... He, you're playing tomorrow, you just left. Confidence. So what, what was it? What was it? That was no, I had a problem with the calf. Obviously, I have oh, a problem with the, the back. Mm -hmm. No, I have a problem with the back. And I have a discus hernia. Mm -hmm. And then the, my nerve is trapped. And then it's going back to the calf. So are you saying you didn't feel 100%? No, I didn't feel 100%. Wow. Yeah. We the night before, we used to play older team versus young team. Yeah. Warbeck scored a hat-trick. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> The night before in the Luznicki Stadium, he scored a hat trick against us, oh, and we're standing and thinking big, big, <laughs> big arguments. Remember, big arguments on the pitch. Everyone's going crazy, and then you know you come up and think, "Wow, that last session before the big Champions League final couldn't have gone any worse." Oh, oh no, it was, the work, it was terrible. But then obviously he didn't the get a shirt the next day. The the was, yeah, but the rest he was young. He was young, but it was an amazing time. I mean, that that was the for me that was my finest hour on the pitch, winning the Champions League. It was the best moment for me. For you. Yes, if you look at now, but um, I think for me, more most important one, the biggest one in the first Premier League title. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, because probably I have a doubt, I doubt myself as well, could I succeed there? And then after the one and a half year, I'm winning the Premier League trophy. And obviously I was playing a big part in that. And so I was like, wow, mm -hmm. that was the big one. Then when it came Champions League final, you know, you know, it's kind of, yeah, great. You know, but, you know, I, I don't know. If you look at now, definitely Champions League, especially because I was playing Lozhniki, yeah, everything is great. But for me personally, I think that's the time first Premier League title is when my career has changed. Mm -hmm. I think when people consider me as someone who is actually playing on the top. Wait, wait, go back to sorry, Lozhniki for the 2008 final. Why did Chokla slap you? I've never asked you that. No, because I, it, it was some arguing there on, on, on the on their half and I actually was running 30 meters to there and he was there as well. I don't know what's happening there, but he, he, he slapped me. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> I was happy with that. Huh? I was tired at that point. I was thinking, please let him go off. Thank you. What yeah. was your thoughts as it was going to penalties? Um, listen, we are exhausted all the time. Mm. And I remember the, <clears throat> when, when we stood together and Gaffa was actually talking, who's going to take the penalties. It was me or Gixi. Hmm. And I remember, I'm not sure is it Gixi next one or, my, or, or myself. And and I'm next to the Gixi. And Gixi was asking, Vida, who's next? I don't know, you or me. <laughs> and and then I didn't want to say, I'm going to shoot. Yeah, yeah. Gixi as well was kind of not 100%. It was, mm. But the Gixi said, okay, I'm going to do it. And Gixi like, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Gixi. <laughs> you not want to tell me? Huh? You, you was a good penalty taker. Really? Good penalty taker. Yeah. yeah. You bottled it on it. Actually, I, I, I was, I was, I was, I was next, or I was after you. After me, I think. Because I, I always shot, thought I was next for some reason. I shot fifteen penalties, sixteen penalties in my career. I, I missed just one. I took two. Missed one. Fifty-fifty. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh man. <laughs> Listen, I'm just here. Man, I, I don't know anything about European finals, so I'm just here listening. Um, could you feel like, for example, could you feel that after that Invincible, did you feel you were going to go again? Or was there the, the Barcelona thing that was a bit hanging over your heads? Actually, we had the uh, young and experienced year at the time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we definitely believe that it's more trophies to come. Mm -hmm. And... Obviously, after that, we played two more Champions League finals. Mm. Uh, but before, I know we're going to go on to other questions here, but what's that like? I've seen the highlights and I say to Rio, one of the best punditry pieces he's ever done was when he was talking about Messi mm. and how difficult mm. that Pep Guardiola team was. I yeah. mean, you go forward, yeah. Yeah. you don't know what to do. Peter, you know. Do you remember when we stood in the middle of the pitch and looked at each other just to say like, What's where going is, on? Where, what, I've not touched no one. I think you might have said it to me. I, or I said, I said I've, not, I've not even got near no one. No, what's the issue actually? They, they have 
possession for a long time. And obviously yeah. Messi is not playing as a striker, he's playing as a, as a fake striker. He's actually always in, in between the defenders and the middle of the park. And actually he's inviting you to go out of your zone so that you can leave in the zone so that the fingers, they can run space behind. Space behind. Oh my gosh. Kill and him. and this is what you try to avoid. And you always that question in your mind as a defender, should I go yep. or stay? Yeah. And I think that game in Rome was the longest game ever. Yeah, it was the worst game ever. And longest. And longest, I have to agree. Was there yeah. arguments or was it, you know when you said, oh, I haven't no. touched anyone. Are you arguing? Are you We're confused? Both. What? And how are you trying to rectify this problem? Uh, I think now we can go to the asking other questions. Yeah. And then- <laughs> Did they pay the refs? That's what we want to know. <laughs> they, were, they, were just, they were a great team. Yeah. So it's as simple as that. Sometimes after time you look at it and we're mm. at a time you look at it and you're on the beach after. We won the league that year. I always says we won the league both those years and, and I never got to enjoy it. Really? Just Because the final took everything out of you yeah. afterwards. <sighs> crazy and like so you're sitting there and you're thinking like how can we dissect this and you can say what you want end of the day probably one of the best if not the best club team ever I think so I think so we easily that's the only way it we settles with me easily because if it's not the best team it would kill me it would, it would have got in my head too much but you have to say they had the best team man Rio this current Man United team hmm. do you think so before we get onto that go on what was your best Celebration after party. Oh, listen, I, uh, we had quite a few. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> the pub. Yeah, because the old pub I, grapes. Yeah, the grapes. Yeah. I, 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 that's me. During the day, uh, social with the guys. One o'clock we'd get in the pub. And to be fair, most of the guys in the pub was the English guys and British, I would say. And there is the singer with the guitar and rock music. Mm. That's me all day long. <laughs> no, seriously, yeah. that's me all day long. I don't like R&B, club, clubbing. It was, it was not, I didn't really enjoy it. But that time in the pub, you know, mm. where we had to get the singing the songs, obviously even the songs of the football players and yeah, the, yeah. the Man United. Yeah, man, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, nice. <laughs> nice, good times. Yeah. No, it was good time. It was a good time. Yeah, great time. How was you for the um, interview after Moscow? Sorry? The interview after Moscow, you got the hat on. The oh yeah. Interviewed in the morning. Do you no. even remember it? Yeah, no, I, I no, I, I don't remember the interview, but I remember that when I was See, leaving the st leaving the the the, <laughs> the pitch, there is the because in in Russia, the soldiers, yeah, yeah, they're protecting the stadium, yeah, yeah. and it was half 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 soldiers, half po police, and I saw some soldier and I took the hat from him and put it on my head <laughs> because it was great for memory because I played there. Mm. For one and a half year, I had great memories from, from, from Moscow. And then I came back and won to win the still Champions in jail for League. That. <laughs> Sorry? He's still in jail for that. Uh, no, I, I will be fine there. <laughs> I will be fine there. Basically, you don't remember the interview the day after? So there's an interview outside the hotel for everyone who's like, what are you on about? There was an interview the day after. He hasn't got a pupil in his face. He is just completely gone. <laughs> and he's wearing that soldier's hat and just talking all sorts of bollocks. It's brilliant. Yeah, that, was it's drunkest, that was the drunkest I'd ever been. <laughs> you said you were not playing, it? No, but the, the issue mm. was the, the we left the stadium, I think, two o'clock. In the morning, yeah. And then we have all family waiting for us in the hotel and obviously music, uh, mm. catering, everything. So... We started celebrating late, mm. so we finished late. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the plane. Straight to the plane, yeah. Wow, that was mad. Well, that's the end of part one. Make sure to stick around for part two because it gets even tastier in the next part. <laughs>